Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, we will see how to print logs in Selenium. So if you see in many of the program which we have used till now, we have not printed logs. We are just printing an output on the console. Okay, let me show you the first program which we have written. In there also, I have not used log anywhere. Okay, so if you see in this, I'm trying to print something on the console as pass or fail. But when you're working on a real project in your company, you don't have to print on your console like this through sysout. This is just for a practice purpose. We have done that. In the real time, you have to print logs. Okay, and you want that logs to be printed on the console and also on some file so that you can refer it later on so that you know because right now we are just going through one test case it might possible you have to execute hundred of the test case and it would not be possible for you to be in front of your screen and just to check this out to see if your selenium scripts are working fine or not so it's always better to have these uh, information to get saved somewhere in a file and we can refer that later on which can be done through logs so it's very easy to have logs in our Selenium script and for this we will use a class called log4j and this log4j is a class which is used in many of the project including whatever has been developed in Java or any other tool also. So it's a very important concept which we have to know. So what you have to do you so right now I have created a file called generate logs.java so this is just a simplest file uh, I have not done anything in that and whatever we are doing in every file we have set the system property and we have initialized our driver object so this is only I have written till now now we will write how to generate logs so for generating logs what we have to make sure that there is a jar file and that jar file is called log4j which we need to download it I have already done that for my computer but uh, for your computer if you have not downloaded you can just go to google.com and you can just type download log4j okay once you click on that it download log download log4j jar once you click on the search button it will give you the jar file which you need to download on your computer let me just type it here download log for J jar log for oh, I have written log for H no matter so nowadays Google is very smart and even if you type it wrong it will let you know that you have done something wrong so see uh, this is the link the first link download Apache log for J so you can download from here maybe you can download from here so any of the link will work for you just click on that and you can download this jar file so once it get downloaded what you have to do you have to set in your build path like the way we were setting up all the jars here in our project okay you can click on properties java build path so like the way we are setting up all the jars we have to click on add external jar and you know we can click on that log4j file all right so this is only a prerequisite before we write a code now what we have to do there is one more thing before we write our uh, code we have to set the properties of our log in order to tell our scripts that what is the file name what is the layout which we want to use the logs so what you have to do for this so okay let me remove this one okay so this is the log4j property file so this is the file in which I have written down everything whatever needed in the log so you don't have to remember this code because this is a one-time code and this is just we are setting up the property but yes I will explain you what is written in this file and I will also put that code in the description section so that when you are trying on your computer you can just copy paste it here you don't have to remember it but just know what it do so basically this file has three sections one is to define your root logger second is to define your appender and the third is to define the layout and pattern okay so what do you mean by root logger 
So root logger is something which tells our script that what kind of log you want to print. There are different kinds of log like info log, debug log. Okay, so we have to tell our Selenium what kind of log which we use for our Selenium script. For now, we will use the info log just for the information purpose. And you have to also tell that which kind of log you want to print. So I want to print the log in console. I want to print log in HTML and I want to print a log in a file. Okay, so I've given all these three. Then you have to define the appender. So the work of appender is to append the logs in the file. And we need to declare that. So I have given log4j.appender.console. So first I have used console and I have given here org.apache.log4j.console appender. That's it. Now second for appending in the file, I have given these two lines and the same way I have initialized ttcc and also the file name of that because when you're appending in a file, you have to make sure it appended in the following file. Okay. Third. Now, when we are doing it for the HTML, again, I have declared it for the HTML file appender and I have given my HTML file name. Also, if you notice, I have given log folder. So I want whatever is saved in that file should go into this folder log. Okay. And then there's a layout which is defined for console file and HTML. So this is the layout which I am using right now. So this layout can be changed, but for now, don't change it. Just copy and paste from the description section and use the same layout. Okay. So in my project, I have created a folder called log. Let me just clear this. So if you see, so why it's showing because I have already run it one time. All right. So see, this is a log4j property, this file which you have to keep in your root folder. Okay. This is a log folder, which you have to create by doing a right click and clicking on new and doing click on folder. It will create a new folder for you. Just name it as log. Okay. And this is the file which you need to create. So you have to do a right click new and then file, and then you can create this log 4 j property file. All right. Okay, so, but I'm not creating it because I will done and once you create it, you just copy paste this uh, this uh, code from the description section for setting up the properties of log. Okay, now, so we have already done that. So our jar file is in our uh, build path. We have created this log properties and now we just have to go through and see how do we use it? How do we use logs in our file? Okay, so for that, what we will do first, we will call our property file, our log4j property file, and for that, there is a class called property configurator. Okay, so here I will give property config, it's P R O P E R T Y C O N F I G U R A T O R. Okay, and then I need to call a method called configure. Okay, so in this I need to give a file through in which you know my properties are saved. So for that I will do like this and then I will give a dot so that it's mean uh, my project folder. I will give a backslash and I will give the file name. So it would be log4j dot properties. Okay, and I will close this out there. All right, and then there's a class called logger. Okay, so I will have to create an object of this class logger. So I'm creating an object logger logger. And for that in this, we don't have to do something like a new logger. We again have to call a class logger and we have to call this method which call get logger. So it will create an object of the logger. And then I can give my class name in which I am working upon. So I can give my class name, which is generate logs. Yeah. Okay. If you see, it's giving me an error because it's trying to import something from log4j. So I will click on that. Okay. So uh, it's giving me one error. Let me see. 
so something is wrong with the configure okay let me see what it says syntax error expected after this token okay so i think i have put a double quote here which is incorrect so i need to give double quote inside all right see these sometimes small mistakes you know create issues all right so let's move forward so we have already gi given three steps we have done first of all we have uh, write the property file okay and we have also appended our uh, jar file into my build path and now i have even configured i have given the path where my property file is now we can directly use the logger okay so instead of giving system.out.println we have to give logger.info everywhere in the program so what i am doing to right now i am not creating any new program i am just using the old program which we have used before okay so from here because these two lines are already there in my program i don't want to copy this i will copy the other things which are there up to else part okay and if you see uh, what i am doing in this program i am giving the actual title is blank and expected title is google then i am getting driver.get i am opening this page and i am getting the title of the page and then i am checking my expected and actual title because whatever title i have got i am storing in the actual title and then i am checking if my expected is equal to actual then it is pass else it is fail so as I said before, in the real program, in the real world, we don't use sysout. We use logs to log it on the console or on the file. So instead of system.out.println, I will call logger.info. That's it. And here also, logger.info. Okay. Now, in the end, what I will do? I will also close my browser okay so our program is done so this was simplest thing logger.info just remember the three steps which we have done and after that I will do a right click run as Java application And it retired to open the web page. So you have to bear with me because today internet is working very slow for me. So it may take some time. So it's trying to open Google. It's because today my wireless is not working. So I am just connecting with my mobile data. Okay, let's see. Till the time my page is not loaded, my scripts will not continue. Okay? Because Selenium has an inbuilt page load feature. Okay, so it has given me some error. Let's see what the error is. It says, okay, error could not read the configuration file log 4 dot properties. The system cannot file specified log 4 dot properties okay now we will see do we have that file or not? we have but the name is log 4 j dot properties okay so i will type here log 4 j now let's run again So it is very important concept. Once you learn this, you can use the same concept anywhere else also. So it doesn't mean only in Selenium. In other uh, like other tools also, like in, if you are using APM or maybe some other tool which is not even related to testing but for some real project on Java, then also you can use the same concepts here. Okay. So it's open the page and we can see the title is giving Google here. So I expect my test case to get passed once it get the title. Okay, still trying to load the page.
come on. The data connection cannot be so slow, it should be fast. Okay, great. So if you see, it has printed the log as pass. Okay, so it has printed this log. So what you will see, it has printed the log on the console. And the main motive, which we wanted, that these logs get printed in my file also. So I will do a right click and click on refresh on my project because I have a folder log here and expect some files to get be there in this. Okay, and if I click on this log file, you will see under my log dot log it has got printed my log. Okay. And now if I see under web page doing a right click open with web browser, you will see my log is printed under this also. Okay. So this is the way you print the logs on your web page. You create a web page and you print the logs on your file. And at the time of your all the test cases get passed or fail or any log you which you want to print, even you can give log on every line of your code so that you can know step by step what is happening with your code when you see the logs at the end of all the test cases has run. But be mindful when you are printing the logs because we don't want the unnecessary things to be also on the log. Let's assume that uh, you have 100 test case and each test case you know performing something and in each test case there are 10 line of codes so you don't want to go through all those 1000 line of log file to know what is happening so just put the log whenever it is required just put these whenever there is a need for that don't put it on each and every line of your code okay so i hope by this you would be able to clear your log concepts still repeating one more time just remember three things you have to just do a build path of your log4j file you have to create this property file which we have done log4j.properties okay and then you have to just configure your log4j file here okay once it is done you can just use logger.info instead of sys.out all right thank you for watching this video if you like the video please hit on like button if you don't like the video please dislike it provide your feedback to me and subscribe my channel thank you